My name is Jan Engeland. I am talking now today about assistive technology in the European perspective. So my presentation will be about a little bit, as I said, about assistive technology and then mainly about what is, what is going on on European and global scale. The first idea is what is assistive technology and another topic that is quite well heavily used, so to say, is design for all. And how does that fit with usability? I have a couple of slides which I borrowed from my colleague Knut Norby a long time ago. He showed us a usability pyramid. It looks like this. It's a pyramid starting with uh, good human abilities on the bottom side, poor on top. And then you have different types of support. I mean, a large part of the people can use all standard equipment. Most or many people can use the equipment with adaptation. Then you have those who need real assistive technology, a really adapted, specially made equipment and so on. And you have actually also a small group of people who will always need personal assistance for which you cannot make any general solution. Now, when we go further to inclusive design or design for all, actually the same pyramid shows up, but now you will see that the different levels have moved a bit. That means that the bottom part can be, become larger if you make inclusive design, and that means that less people need special adaptations, special assistive technology, but there will always be this small part of people that need personal assistance. So design for all actually doesn't mean design for everyone, but for a much larger part of the population than it used to be before. Now, one of the items that pops up quite often is also it should be user-centered and uh, some time ago I found a joke about that. The user actually should be more or less a perfect person as you can see on this slide and you, we all know that there is no user that fits into this uh, image. Just a couple of words then about the types of accessibility. The most important ones are the accessibility of the built environment which you all know it's about wheelchair access and that much, much more than that. And then the uh, e-accessibility, the accessibility of all the ICT solutions that pop up around us more and more. In the past, accessibility was seen to be a necessary for people, for all people, but especially for people with an impairment. But nowadays there is a much huger focus on the growing age population, which also needs sometimes uh, assistive and accessible solutions. This is the classical picture. It's a picture that's produced uh, every couple of years by the European Commission. And this one actually shows the split in population groups that we can expect over the next decades. And if we see 2013 as today, the most striking part is that about 5% uh, of this is top, top level are actually people over 80, but uh, in 2050, 2060, this will be more than 10%. Than now about European actions. The early 90s actually uh, showed us the start of research project. The first one was tied, it uh, comes back a little bit later, is the technology initiative for disabled and elderly. And then, up to today, uh, actions by standardization bodies, the Council of Europe, the European Commission, they all have projects in accessibility, inclusion, and e-inclusion, as it is called also nowadays. For example, the Council of Europe, they had a special resolution on full citizenship of persons with disabilities and especially focusing even on the use of new technologies. So there is definitely quite some interest. A little bit later also the European Commission supported the creation of a European Design for All and e-accessibility network, which is still operational nowadays. 
And what are Europe's main actors in this field? Well, there are several organizations to start with those. It's the Association for the Advancement of Assistive Technology in Europe. And this assembles all the people working in this assistive technology field. It's a huge organization and it has a very well known biannual or two yearly conferences. There is a European Association of Service Providers for persons with disabilities. So these are the people really working on a professional basis with people with a disability. The European Disability Forum, on the other hand, is a, a large uh, group actually grouping all the uh, European organizations for impaired or handicapped people. And they, their role is mainly in uh, working on the European scale and lobbying, uh, for example, in, in Brussels. The ICCHP, it's a very complicated name again, but this is a bit curious. It's an informal organization. It has no real statutes, no real members, but this uh, group manages to organize, uh, again, two yearly conferences. If you really want to know what's going on in Europe, you should choose between the Triple ATE conference and the ICCHP conference. Uh, they are in alternating years. There is a yearly activity which is becoming quite interesting and important, is the Forum on E-Accessibility. And it is in, uh, for the rest of Europe actually, it is an interesting source on actions and activities in French-speaking Europe, which often you do not come in contact in the other international conferences. Publications, as you can imagine, there are quite a lot, although not very much, uh, publications in the field of assistive technology. Actually, the oldest one, I call it an old-timer, is the Journal of Visual Impairment and Blindness, which is focusing, it has a very well, small focus, if you want, but it is over 110 years old by now. The other ones which I mention here are technology and disability, which is uh, also supported by this AAAT organization, and then a publication by a commercial group, by Springer, Universal Access to the Information Society. Those are actually the two most important publications in assistive technology. European research, as I tell, told uh, Tider, the Technology and Dis for Disabled and Elderly Initiative started already in 1991. Uh, it's very curious to see now, we are 25 years later, that uh, interesting topics in this first call, the first Tider call, are still hot items nowadays. Framework research program of the European Commission came up and uh, we have been going from the third to the seventh framework, actually, and then it was followed up by a thing called Horizon 2020. So the inclusion, as said, is a topic of research, but it's also a major topic of one of the EU's Directorate General. The Directorate General is actually like a ministry, and the one which is in charge of inclusion is called CONNECT nowadays. Uh, they uh, have, as a special topic, they have to promote digital literacy skills and inclusion. Okay, I'm coming to another field, it's standardization. The European standardization groups, SENS, SENELEC and ETSI are the major ones. One should be aware that standardization topics, the things that are standardized, they were in the past pushed by companies. Companies who found it interesting to have a standard so that they could uh, produce uh, equipment, devices that fit together with other people and so on. But the impulse for standardization came from companies. Nowadays, the European Commission has a system where it can intervene to, in orienting standardization actions. And they, that's called a mandate. So the European Commission can give a mandate to the standardization bodies and say, okay, we really need this to be done, even if companies do not push it, we want to push it and we also pay for it, to be honest. So that's a mandate. 
Okay, this is standardization and this is actually what I wanted to say today. Thank you for your interest.